Good morning everyone and welcome back. Now today, as you probably read by the title, I'm going to be doing lure versus bait fishing challenge. Now I'm out here on the sand flat this morning and I've had to get out here nice and early because as you can tell that tide is really starting to flow in. I'm up on the sand flat with my pump and bucket and our bait of choice for today is going to be sand yabbies slash nippers. Whatever you like to call them, they're an absolute gun bait and they work super super well. This is taking me all the way back to my childhood roots where I used to come to this place, pump yabbies, head over to this exact, exact weed bar over there and fish for all sorts of estuary species. Anyway, I think that's enough of me talking. That tide is really starting to come up, so I've got to get my bait and get out of here. Come along for the adventure. This should be an interesting challenge. So we've got our nipper pump right here. This is my pops. Thank you, pop. You're probably wondering where your pump went this morning. Yep, I've stolen it just for today. Set that to the right setting. There's a little nodule inside the end here which you can tighten to adjust how much pump and pressure you want to get out of that hole. There's a guy over here cleaning out his home right as we speak. Good morning sir. Keen to be used for some bait. I think I've seen one in there. Yep there he is and he's a great size. Look at that and that's our bait. Sand yabby or nipper whatever you like to call them. The cool thing about this bait Everything in the estuary will eat it. I've used this as a kid and pretty much all my life before switching to lures and had so much great success with these. So I have no doubt that we're gonna smash it today with this bait. I just knocked his little claw off. Let's put him in the little holder. And there he is. That's our first bait of hopefully many. I'm pretty positive I just seen one. There he is. That's another good size nipper. Look at that, about the same size as the last. All right, I'll collect a nice amount of these and I'll check back with you. All right, I reckon we've got enough. Let's start making our way back to the car. And then, um, yeah, we'll move to a spot where we can flick these yabbies and lures around. Well, back at the car now, and we've got our baits right here. We've got a nice abundance of nippers, ranging from big to small, little claws and big claws. But just before we head off to a different location, I was walking back across the sand flat and both zippers on my bag popped and broke. So before heading to the spot, I'm actually going to have to make a trip home to pick up a new bag. Anyways, let's get on the road and let's go. We have now made it out to the spot and we have everything we need to try and catch some fish. So I'm going to be starting off by chucking out the nipper and I've positioned this stick here so it holds it up just a little bit upright so I'll be able to tell when I get a bite. Now I've got the nippers in the little container over here. There they are. Good amount of them, that should get us through the day. So what I'm thinking I might do is while I have one rod out with the nipper on it, I'm gonna be chucking around a live nipper, AKA a lure. So I'm gonna be chucking that lure around, trying to make it look as realistic as possible. And we're gonna put the two up in a head-to-head -head battle, bait versus lure. So without further ado, let's get our lines out there and see if we can get onto some fish. This should be a pretty fun challenge. Let's get into it. And here's the bait setup for today. I'm just gonna go over it real quick. This is a Tempesta VXS, seven foot eight, four to eight pound. This is one of my old rods that I've just paired up because this is my medium setup. I've got a 2,500 size reel that's paired with 10 pound braid and I've got 10 pound leader. 
Now, this is a spot where Taylor often come past. Not that I'm trying to hook those guys today, but I just want that little extra reassurance instead of using like six pound or eight pound. Thought I'd go up to 10, but the way you want to rig your yabby is just straight through the butt. Straight through the butt, thread it all the way through. And I like to pop it out around his head. And they call this a suicide bait. Don't know why, just is called a suicide bait. So we'll get that out and then we'll chuck around the lure. I don't know what kind of hook this is as well. Just got it from under the house and that's just on a little ball sinker. So we're gonna loosen that drag once we cast and set it in the holder. Nice little cast out there. Set that drag to basically nothing so that fish can just run. Pull up a bit of slack and set him there in the holder. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about that. That's bait number one out. Now we're on to setup number two, which I'm gonna be flicking around. Just this little live yabby from Pro Lure. Just added a tiny bit of scent to the belly. Just give me a bit of an advantage. Now what I have here is the new Shimano T-Curve Premium seven foot two, two to four kilo, two piece rod. And that's paired with a 2,500 Shimano Vantford, eight pound braid and eight pound leader. And we're just gonna see what can catch a fish first. I'm actually interested to see how this goes. Oh, that was a tap. One tap already on the lure. That was riding close as well. Oh, on the bait. Hits. Hits on the bait. I'm going to try to not strike into it. There we go. Yeah, he's got it. Oh, he tried. He's on it again. Take it, mate. Take it. That has not taken long at all. There's got to be like nothing left on this hook, surely. Well, that's one hit for each. And yep, that yabby is gone. Quickly get another one on and get that thing straight back out. Go with this little medium one. Take off his front claw so I don't get nipped. In through the back side. Straight out the top. It's a very dodgy stick holder, by the way, as well. Oh, check out this stingray. Hey, buddy. He's got no tail. Give it a go out here. Yep. Might just let him eat it for a little bit longer this time. There we go. We got him that time. We got him that time. But can we land him? Feels like a little flatty. Oh, strafing. Oh, it's a flounder. Wow, I haven't caught one of these in a while. Boom, straight up. First fish of the challenge ticked off. And it's 1-0 to the bait. Look at that. Oh, he's engulfed that hook. Absolutely engulfed it. How weird looking are these fish? They're like a mini alien. Alien of the sea. The first fish of the morning on the bait Happens to be a little flat fella. This is an actual, like I mean an actual flat fella. A good old flounder. I haven't caught one of these in a very, very long time. I think the last time I actually got one was on bait over a year and a half ago. But ever since then I've switched to lures and just never seemed to catch flounder. But the day's come where we've got onto another one. We've had him out of the water for a little bit. So let's get this weird looking alien back in the drink. Well, this guy's not looking in too well condition. So I might just leave him right here next to my stuff and I'll check back in a little bit and if he's not going to make it then I'm obviously going to have to take it home and that is the downside of using bait and especially letting them fully consume it you do end up having to keep a lot more fish because they don't make it I'm going to leave that guy there for a bit sitting right there and yeah if he doesn't make it then obviously he'll come home they taste great with a bit of salt and pepper a bit of lemon
Got him. We've got him. Little. <laughs> Very little. Oh, micro brim. Absolutely micro brim on the yabby. Calm down. Calm down. I get spiked by these little ones 90% of the time. So that is two fish for bait and zero for the lure so far. Man, it just, you can't go wrong with using bait. I can't, I can't lie, you can't go wrong. The only reason why I like to use lures is I love the challenge. And I feel like it's a lot more rewarding once you hook a good fish on lures than it is with bait, just sitting it in the holder and waiting. It's more active, you're more in touch with the lure, your line and the rod. It's just a much more fun style of fishing, but like I said, you can't go wrong with bait. It does catch fish. Let's see if we can get another one. Let's see if we can get one on the board for the lure. I think I just got hit. I'm getting hits already. It's just landed. Got him. That's a bit better. I'm suspecting another brim. Is this number three? Far out. Yeah, it's another brim. Still little, but a ever so slight upgrade. Oh, he's just popped straight off. Well, that saves me having to get him out. Fish number three. Number three. Little Brimbo. Oh, that was a terrible, terrible release. Oh. Good hit. Very, very good hit on the lure. Now I have just worked this area pretty well, having that bait out and flicking the lure around. Both getting a number of hits and also getting the fish in on the bait. I'm just going to move up just a tiny bit extra, just so I'm covering some ground. How's this for some snaky territory? I probably should get one of those snake bandages for when I go bass fishing and stuff. Better to be safe than sorry. Oh, I just pulled my rod in. I think I almost just pulled my rod in the drink. Yep. Oh, I dropped him. <laughs> I can't believe that. That was a proper, proper tug. Oh wow, okay. We've picked up something really good on the drop. Very heavy. If this is a brim, this is a donkey. Gotta be flatty. No, nah, that's not a flatty head shake. I think we've got a good brim here. Oh no, it is flatty. It might just go 50. He's grabbed that on the drop. I don't know how I'm supposed to land him. Oh, not the timber. How on earth do I land this fish? Uh, I'm not too sure. There he is in the water. That's a good fish. I might have to try and... Oh, don't pop off now, buddy. Might try and guide him around this way. You just sit tight. Come on, I need to make this one for the lure. I'm fully walking the dog right now. Walking the dog. Yeah, I'll be able to land him up here. Come on, Flatty. Come on. Yes. Woo. Get him up first. There we go. Oh, that's a good fish. That's going to go high 40s. 
I don't know about 50. But that is a great fish. Oh, the bait. The bait just went off. Got a good one on the bait. Well, just got back over here. How, how lucky was that timing? What is it? Seen a lot of silver. Brim. Oh no, tar wine. Oh, pinky. Little pinky snapper. Look at that. On the bait. Doubles. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the score is. I can't remember, so I'll put a tally up on the screen after every fish I get. But wow. Now, how is this for doubles? Got a flatty in one hand and a little pinky snapper in the other. That was so perfect timing. That must have plonked right on his head and he just grabbed it. Had to take him all the way down there to land him. And as soon as I got to the bag, my line started flying off and this little pinky was on the other end. I'm gonna get these fish straight back in the water, but I wanna give this flathead a measure first because he's actually a decent size. She's cruising right on the surface. That's when a monster flatty just goes boof off the top. I'm just going to give this flatty a measure. Oh no, oh no, you're going skits. It's going to be a terrible measure because of the grass. Oh no, that kind of works. So from the front all the way to the tip of the tail, it's going to go 49 and a half. So I was, I was almost correct, but not 49. What the fish has done to me lure? Just completely mungled it up. But that thing is still in perfect nick and ready to be fished. I need to cut that and retie it. Because as the typical flatty do, you put a little bit of freight in that line. And I don't want to risk hooking a really good sized fish with a bit of freight. I am using eight pound leader, so it could easy snap me off if it's a decent size. So I'm going to change it over and retie. So just in case I do hook a really good sized fish, got that little extra bit of confidence. But he's not going to snap me. Now, very important, I say it in a lot of videos, it's only a tiny bit of line, but always make sure to put that back in your bag. And uh, by the looks of things, we've got a pretty, pretty good challenge going. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's four fish to the bait and one fish to the lure, which is a very, very good start in the first half an hour to 45 minutes of fishing. We've got the whole day ahead of us. I'm going to retie this, get a bait on, get both lines out there, and we'll see if we can get any more. For the people that are curious, I'm just tying a uni knot for that. Very strong, very reliable, easy to tie. Cut the tag off, chuck her away, she's ready to go. You know what, I'm going to move back up just a little bit. We made our way down from that tip just to here, and I've noticed a big difference with no bites. Ever since coming to this spot, we've got not even a touch, and it's been 25 minutes, so we're going to move back up to this corner, because it's a bit of a concentration point where that water coming in from the high tide wraps around onto the sand flat. And I reckon that's why the fish are there. So I'm going to wind this one in and we'll move back up there. We must have hit like a dead still zone of this tide. It's just gone really quiet. Nothing on the bait, no touches on the lure. Bit weird, a little bit weird. So this is what we're looking at for the fish activity today. Very high fish activity, 96 stars. And we're just, just about to come into a major bite period. So the fishing should only get better from here on out. And if I just check my barometer, it's 10, 12, which is, it's not super, super high, but that's a pretty good rating. 
check the other one just to be certain and yeah exact same and also if you want to be a little bit extra just to make sure you're fishing on a really good day check fishing times and that's a four star rating so everything for today says fish which was the case this morning but it's gone a little bit quiet so it's just a matter of working them out did you just take the bait you might have just taken that and gone let it sit there for another moment oh oh that was just sitting on the ground that would have been a flatty he would have climbed on it <laughs> That was just sitting there. I was checking to see what it was doing with the bait. Oh, he's, he's got it again. There he is. Whoa, how was that? Bring him up and he came off. You are so tiny, mate. I've actually never caught a flatter this small in my life. There's our little flatty. Very, very little one. Slippery dip. Off he goes. Yep. Taylor. Taylor, 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 eh? Well, that's not a good sign that you are around. You're great fun, but you put scales everywhere, you rip up lures, and you cut lures off with your sharp teeth. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Just the little one. See what I mean by they rip up lures? Look at that. It's just... Pulled that little yabby right in half. I'm gonna have to change that over. Here we are, Pro Lure Live Yabby in the watermelon colour. Had this, had these lures for quite quite a while actually. They do last, but when you get a tailor, they're pretty ruthless, so they just cut straight through your lure. Oh, I also forgot to mention the jig head that I was using. Just a 1/12, 12th jig head with a size one hook. Just gonna thread that through the back of the yabby like we do the live ones. Slide her up. Ready to go. Probably one of the easiest lures to rig in my opinion. Just recast that bait out. Repositioning it. Just a little bit more straight on. Oh wow, okay. Didn't even get to put it in the holder. Feels like a tailor. Oh no. Potential flatty. Yep, it is. Right in the corner of the mouth, just where you want it. Straight up you come. And that's another one for the bait. Hooked him just on the edge of the mouth there. Which is exactly where you want it. And that hook just fell out. You can get on your way. Bloody in the mix of all that little bait there. Whoa! Man, it's so crazy how that tide's changed and we've just come into that peak bite period and the fish are on. Oh, please don't get me. Look at that, he's just inhaled the lure. Straight down the hatch. Oh, he got me but not bad, thankfully. Give you a little toss. Surprisingly that bait hasn't got any touches. I've got two fish now. This thing hasn't got a touch. Obviously got that flatty. Oh, oh Taylor's just grabbed it when I'm winding it. You're kidding me. Are you serious right now? <laughs> that just goes to show they'll hit anything. That is literally a bait rig being fast winded in. There's an obvious sinker in the way. And that tailor has still grabbed it. What are you thinking, mate? The hell, this one's got like a mutant, mutant looking eye. That's what a tailor eye usually looks like. That one's really small, his pupil's tiny. I'm gonna chuck this up on the flat. See if we can get ourselves a brim. Let's 
put that in the holder. Still got no freight on that line, which I'm not complaining about, and we're getting hits already. There it is. Tapping away. Got him. Taylor. Definitely Taylor by those head shakes. Oh, these guys are out. Oh no. Little Brimbo. That's what we were after. That is exactly what we were after. I mean, he's not the ideal size we were after. But beggars can't be choosers. Well, what I'm going to do, since I've been fishing for quite some time now, and that wind is slowly starting to pick up, I think I'm going to get one to two more fish and call it a day. It's been a very, very successful session and a very successful challenge. So we'll see if we can get on to one to two more, and then I'm happy to call it. Come on, Breams, where you at? Where you at, Breams? Yep. That's a good fish. Flatty or brim? Either or either. It's a flatty. Another flatty. Hey, they love this little yabby. The lower yabby, that is. Straight up you come. Once again. And that's an easy legal fish right there. This is what I like to call the slippery dip release. wasn't the most pleasant one but yeah she's off now the way that I'm working this lure is I'm just imagining how a yabby would react to a threat and how he would retreat away and by doing just those two little pop pop just gives a nice darting action of that lure flicking up off the bottom creates a little bit of a dust trail behind it and what I found especially when catching flatted with this lure is the flatty will actually stalk it so you'll do your retrieve and the flatty will actually follow behind it, sit on the sand, wait for it to stop, and that's when they usually jump on it. They think they're getting an easy meal, but then they just cop a nice hook to the chin. Oh, just heard the rod. Yep. We're on. Oh, I don't know if we're still on. Yep, we are. Good fish. <laughs> oh no, it's not that big. Never mind. Very little. Another flat though. Whoa. You're about the same size as the one I just caught and released earlier. Oh, but he's inhaled that. Oh no, absolutely inhaled that hook. Tried my best to get it out. Hopefully I can. Now this is the major downside about using bait and especially having it sat up on a stand. It gives that fish time to really swallow the whole thing and as you can see, he's taken that fully down, so I don't know if we'll be able to get this off. I'm going to try my best, but yeah, I don't think he'll live, unfortunately. And that's why I don't like using bait. I don't think this guy's going to swim off. He got my hand as well, as you can see there. Oh, okay. Oh, he's good. Maybe. Give him a little kick. No, he's good. I don't know how, because that hook was so far down his throat, but he's good. 